guys, Thomas from Team Soccer also here. Come at you guys with the long awaited Ultra Geist deck profile, and people are sleeping on this deck. So, today, not only am I going to show you the deck profile that I've been doing pretty well with, but also tell you what I would change, how the matchups are, how Ultra Geist is with today's meta, and even combos at the end of this. So, if you guys enjoy that, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, all that. And we're just going to get right into it. Uh, first of all, three multi-faker, standard. It's specials from hand when you activate a trap. And then you're able to special summon from deck. Self-explanatory. It locks you into Geist, though. You're going to have to be wary about that. Oh, boo-hoo. Just Geist. <laughs> Mela Seek here. Uh, it goes to Grave. You guys search. And then attacks directly as target and send a card on the field. Uh, really, really good. This is part of the two-card combo. Uh, there's two two-card combos, and then there's a one-card combo. That Metal Seek is part of two of those. So opening up Metal Seek is really good. That's why we also play one-for-one. One. Marionetta just gets better and better with every wave of guy support that we get. It sets your traps, which, except for personal spoofing, why they didn't make that an Ultra Geist card, I don't know, but still upsets me to this day. But you get to set your pro call, you get to set up your reborn, you really get to set up the plays that you can make on your opponent's standby slash draw phase, depending on what you have and what you want to activate. And that's what's really good about this card, as well as it sends an Altergeist um, from your uh, that you control to reborn uh, one, and it's that's really nice, including itself. So if you summon this at multi faker on the grave, it just starts off a lot of combos. Now three pokery, this is very decisive. Because a lot of people like to play one, a lot of people like to play three. But I would rather make really good boards and make sure I have my one copy here than kind of brick it, if that makes sense. Because you're going to brick this if it's a one of anyway. And if you open this up with Metal Seek, you have probably one of the best two card, you have the best two card combo in this deck. Uh, it, does, it works with other things. Again, depends on what your hand. It could help with hand traps. I know that its effect to get it back once per turn is not that optimal because if you guys don't know, you can link from hand, but and then as um, after that happens, you could put this as chain link two if say you summon up um, and also you guys want to get an effect, and you're able to chain block certain things, which is nice, but you can only bring it back to your hand once per duel, so it's unfortunate. Damn, guys, poor instance. Absolutely insane. So, Malwisp, uh, speaking of terrible draws, if this card's at your hand, you reveal it to special it, and then you special it from great, an Ultra Guys from Great, but its effects are negated for that turn. Uh, remember, it's for that turn, not for, um, you know, the entirety. So, if you reborn a Hextia, and this is pointing to it, and you're like, pass, your opponent's turn, that Hextia is live. So, and, so that's what's really good. You're spoofing this off, really. Uh, you don't lie in your hand, but when it's special, remember that. So if you special it from Grave, you can start climbing up. One Silk, you guys have no idea how happy I am to cut this card from 2 to 1. Because whenever I play 2, I just saw my hand constantly. I just hated it. But you don't, you, you still have to play it because the bounce is just so good. Bounce is so good. Polkery, uh, this card helps you do certain combos since... When you link it off, instead of a search, it's a Ultra Geist Forge Barrel. So it can load up the grave. You never really need more than maybe, and this is worst case scenario, two dumps in this grave. You're really just trying to drop one thing and one thing only. That's if you decide to play it. Uh, but when it attacks directly and does damage, instead of sending a card, you draw one, which is nice. Um, should you play more copies? Honestly, absolutely not. Uh, but it's cute in theory. I mean, it's nice to play with, I guess. And then we just have three Ash, self-explanatory. Three Pot of Prosperity, and this is what I love about this deck is that it's, while extra, well, it was cut because of it, we didn't really care about our extra deck as much. As long as we had a Hextia and a Link Karibo, it, it was bit, it was fine. So extra used to be a really nice plus one, but now with the build and how more tight the extra day is, you can't necessarily banish randomly. It's gonna really hurt you in the long run and it could just kill combo straight up. But the good thing about Prosperity is it gets you a certain card here, and with the combos of this deck, it's not that the card advantage is bad, but it's different. You want a specific card, not card advantage, at least when it comes to your opening hand. Of course, everyone wants card advantage, that's how you win. One for one, this helps you me with consistency because if I draw, say, the Polkery, then I am able to 
uh, just to, uh, you know, one for one the Metal Seek and then get my combo off right away. Or you could, you know, normal summon the Metal Seek, one for one the Polkari, and then you still get the same results. So this is just like playing a seventh copy of Metal Seek slash Polkari, but it could be either or, which is really nice. Just helps with the consistency. Get rid of your Garnet. Yep, basically. Start combo, why not? Call by the grave. I mean, when because. you get hand trapped, it sucks, but it's not that bad. You know, if you have call by the grave. You can still play through a hand trap, mind you, but builds aren't as optimal. Three spoofing. You shuffle back an ultra guys four costs, mind you, unfortunately. But it could be good, could be bad. To add one, so if your putt for some reason, I don't know, pops a monster on field or something, you could just spoofing it away. It's not destroyed, and then you get the search. So it's not that bad. And, you know, triggers multi-faker because if you activate this and then search multi-faker, you special faker. One, the deck doesn't trigger multi-faker. No, nothing. Uh, to Procol, uh, your Ultra Guys cards on the field cannot be getting negated. Now, remember, this is field, okay? Uh, there's some, a lot of people are going to read this as, oh, Ultra Guys cards cannot be negated per at all. No, you activate effects in Grave, and, yeah. This isn't going to protect that, as well as it is basically a Psalm Strike in a way of if a monster activates an effect, or more Divine Wrath is probably a better uh, way to say it, you send an Ultra Guys card you control besides this, and you negate and destroy that. So, one manifestation, it's good. It help, if it's in Grave, you banish to recur a trap, and then it just reborns. It, it really does help because you can reborn anything, and again, it'll trigger Multi Faker, gives you the bodies that you need for Hextia because. Hextia is not once per turn, but we're going to get into her. Manifestation's great, it's just you don't want to see it, and you're really only going to resolve this once if you're going to win the duel. So, there's no other reason to play one. Now, these are unfortunately the bricks that you got to play. That's how Artogast is in 2023. So, I'm going to explain these. This card negates a trap if you send an Ultra Geist card from your hand. So yeah, I guess it protects the guys evenly. Uh, the reason you play this isn't because of that, it's a bad card, but you can activate the turn it was set. So, Manifestation plus Faker in hand gives you a great two-card combo, however, it, you need to play this in order to do that. So, if you draw this, it sucks. It's really terrible, to be honest, but as long as you don't draw it, your prop, you're really, really good. This is good, however, against Labyrinth. Um, I was playing against Labyrinth, and it was really nice because... I don't have to keep burning my Hextia, I can just use this, uh, which is really good here. So, a lot of Ultra Guys players go from main to side. Like, I know the guy who, who got like 6 out of regional, he liked to, he sided this, but he would put it in if he knew he was going first for the combo. Uh, I remember. And this is kind of a reborn for a Link, so it's like worse manifestation, but you can banish it from Grave to uh, immediately normal summon, which is really good with... Uh, you know, something like Marionetter, because then you get to set the trap, uh, which is good. And it helps you extend your combos more, but if you draw it, it is really bad. Uh, I thought about cutting it, and I might cut it, but there are times where it's so good where this card comes out, but there are just times where, you know, you have it in your opening hand, and you kind of just hate yourself. Uh, but again, you're going to want to forge burial this, by the way. This is the one target I was talking about. Uh, well, I, I have, didn't have, only have to say this name, card's name once. Paratrader, yes. So, Paratrader, you flush this card off, you're pretty Gucci. Uh, then you have the three evenly. This deck's big weakness is going second because the what the board you can actually build is really good. There's not exactly a board breaker that breaks it besides Kaijus, and depending on how you set it up, they might need multiple uh, Kaijus. But again, it depends on how you had your arrows pointed as well. You still have interrupts, which is still really, really nice. But the evenly, if you lose the die roll and then you drop evenly, they don't expect evenly round one. And that's at least what I've seen. So I've had opponents just, they just lose the, the first round off one evenly. Who main decks evenly? Exactly. Three imperm. This card is the go. We got to zoom in on that. Yeah, this card looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, uh, uh, this is a really good card for many reasons. Now, now of course we know the obvious, but with Multi Faker, what you're able to do is imagine setting up interrupts during your opponent's turn, because if they do something, and you're like, okay, uh, that's worth imperming, right? You activate imperm on resolution if you have Faker in hand, and this is during your opponent's first turn. You have not had a turn yet. 
you reveal faker, you special faker, and then you can special summon silk. So you have two bodies on board. So, you know, yeah, they could pop and all that, but you also have a bounce. You could bounce the faker back to your hand to bounce one of their cards. You have a body to link off with if you need it. And it's really cool that your opponent has to break a board before you even had a move. And I kind of like that a little bit. Your turn, more like our turn. Exactly. And then two solemn strikes. This is a 40 card deck. So, you know, I could have made it 41, but so far I like it. Uh, I don't like the, the Reborn Brick as much. I just feel like sometimes it's better if I replace it, I maybe replace it with a third strike uh, or something else. Sometimes these gets, these usually do get sided though, just because if I'm going uh, second and I know I'm going second, then there's way better cards for me going second, obviously. So you guys will see in the extra deck here. Now, Extra deck, three Hextia. Now, this card, and this is the most important thing, its spell and trap negate is not once per turn. It has to point to a monster and send it in order to negate a spell or trap, but it's not once per turn. So if you have two Hextias pointing to each other, you could tri you could tribute the one guy here and then tribute the guy here. Or, if you have this pointed to any Altergeist, say our Faker, right? What you could do is, let's say they activate um, Forbidden Droplet, right? Or not Forbidden Droplet, let's say they activate Power Prosperity, right? You negate that Power Prosperity, you just don't want them to have the consistency. They think that you, uh, they baited something out. Well, you could Manifestation to Reborn the Faker, get a Faker effect, and then special something else, and then you have another uh, Interrupt, which is really cool. Or if you have another Hexian Grave, it just gets really wonky. <laughs> Card once returns? What are those? You could technically negate up to three in spell traps per turn, and that will just kill that, so they don't know how to do it. So, yeah, you play three, even though I... Oh, no, there's a third one. Uh, so, yeah, and then, but the once per turn is when sent to the graveyard, you get to search from deck, uh, an Altergeist card, which is in the combo that is needed. That is once per turn, so definitely be wary of that. Two, Prime Banshee. Now, the reason this card spiked up is because it's actually using combos. Now, it takes two Ultra Geist cards, so you use a Hexie and something else, and you are able to tribute to Special Summon uh, from the deck, which is really good. And when it hits the grave, you add an Ultra Geist card from your graveyard to your hand, so you can add the Battle Wisp since it was added Special, right, which is really cool. You can add a play for next turn. Really, really good. And then you play... Uh, two and many. I'm working on getting the quarter centuries because they're really cheap. They're only like 25. This card on summon sets a Geist card from the deck to the um, field, which is really, really nice. And if you're doing this in the combo, which you should be, you're actually chain blocking the effect anyway. So unless they have Imperm, which if they wait this long to Imperm, good job. You win because they don't know what your deck does. Um, but then you're able to steal an opponent's monster. Um, basically, it's like, basically, it's brain control, but permanent, and it is treated as a Geist card, but that is only once per turn. Uh, it's a nice card. Uh, when you have this pointing to a Hexia, you have a 4,500 attack Hextia, and that's Poggers. Gotta love archetypal big eye. Yep. Um, then you have this guy. All you need to know is if he's tributed, he could come back. If you want to not play this card, because I've seen some Geist players play it, some do not. You don't necessarily have to, but you can sync three and three because for those who actually do not know, and I, I can't believe I didn't say this, this guy's a tuner. They, I don't know, they just started giving tuners like crazy. You're able to make this point to a Hexia, and then you're able just to reborn it twice. And then if you have Manifestation, that's three spell trap negates. And remember, you're going to also have Pro Call on the field as a negate too, and then maybe you'll have a bounce as well. That's five interrupts right there, but you guys will see the board we build. And then Harold, the one card combo essentially is Melseek. If you have Melseek, you're able to get into this. And it's nice because you have a little flood game on the field and the game. Obviously you want to set up more, but it's a nice one card combo that's cute. Wait, using Herald for its intended effect? Crazy, right? Damn. <laughs> El Mirage, Link Karibo, and Link Karibo, and Anima. So, uh, all, this is obvious, it's a link off our Melseek for searches. This just stops an attack. Pop, you guys protect something, but and, and Nima could steal. So this is a really good link one going second. Um, it's so fun because they don't look at that zone. They just don't know. They really aren't prepared. Link ones were a mistake. Yeah. Uh, not Anima. If, if, if guys got a link one, that'd be crazy. 
Uh, then you got Phoenix, Unicorn, and Axis Code. Just generic stuff right here. Then we got the sideboard. Now this is something I might end up maining is three droll. I also want to make, or not three droll. <laughs> That's an awkward looking droll. Oh yeah, bro, bro. He hit, droll hit the gym. Uh, three Damn. Nibiru. I end up maining this almost every match where I'm probably going to find some room for this in the main. Uh, it's just so good this format against Unchained, against Rescue Ace, uh, and other decks as well because a lot of decks are not popping up. Uh, definitely a really great card. Do you uh, need a summon for your deck? Yes, Nib is a good option. Three Droplet, honestly, depending on what they have, you might your a Droplet could end up treating it like it's your turn one, and you're able just to pop off. And the board could beat over a lot of stuff because your board is going to have a 3,000 attack monster with Edminia. Sure, that's not that impressive, but you can have a, a 36 and a, like another 3,000, depending on what you're able to do. So not a bad card at all, and if they have like a floodgate, which is really cool, depending on if they flipped or not, sending a traps. Well, no, if they have a floodgate, you're upset. Never mind. <laughs> Three summon limit. Now this is something else I've been looking to main because every time I sided in summon limit, like summon limit would just win me matches, like game threes, because I would activate summon limit somewhere in their combo, and it this does all. And what the cool thing is is that it makes you not have to force something during standbys to multi-faker because if they evenly you, it sucks. But if they evenly you and you want to leave the summon limit on the field, oh, they think they can pop off. They, they summon something, cool, great. They try to summon something, a second thing. Oh, okay, we're going to summon limit and then reveal faker, right? So now they're stuck. They can't summon anymore because that was their second summon. And depending on what your board is slash uh, faker, whatever, you get a bounce of one of those monsters. So... Really, really nice. I actually kind of want to play with this in the main. Uh, you guys should as well. Card says no playing. Who would have thought? Good card. You know, back row removal. I like to play two Cyclone and a Duster just because I don't want to play like three Cyclone and a Duster. But I've never... That's just me as a player. Then three Lava Golem. You should not be playing Lava Golem. Play Kaijus. I forgot my Kaijus and I played this and... Granted, depending on your feel and all that, you don't always necessarily need your normal summon unless you're about to use like a two-card combo per se, but I don't know. It's something that if you need to, you need to, but play Kaijus. Kaijus are way better in this well, format. What about the ball? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very much not bad either. So I'm going to show you guys uh, a couple quick combos over here. Also, if you're buying this, if this deck interests you, and you're buying anything off TCG Player, please use my link down in the description below. Uh, when you buy anything on TCG Player, it helps support the channel to know what this cost to you. So this first combo is really simple. This is just Meloseek here. So you're gonna normal summon your Meloseek, right? All Gucci. You're gonna link off into, say like a Link Rebo here. Effect of Meloseek is gonna trigger and get you a search. You're gonna search Malwisp here. Since Malwisp was searched and not drawn, you can reveal it to special and then it will special summon from grave your Meloseek. So now you're able to sync here and you're going to put a Herald, right, on the field. Just don't make sure it's not the same uh, call as the Link Karibo. Do not do that. Now, this is just an Omni Gate and any monster sent from the deck or hand is banished instead. With tier being at the time of this recording was tier 1.5. But we saw, I saw the core TCG top 32, and yeah, that deck might be just tier 1 again, <laughs> unfortunately. This hurts tier a lot, and I absolutely love that. And while it's not the best board, this just, the Floodgate does kill decks. It is also an Omni Gate, and you could protect it with Link Karibo. And seeing that you have other cards in your hand, you're going to have follow-up, and you're just going to have traps like Strike, Imperm, Protocol, all that to activate. And then if you have Faker in hand... It's really, really good. So you'll, you're usually this board, it's on the weaker side. Again, you're going to want your two-card combos, but it, I have actually stopped my opponent just with the, the, that combo alone. Now, the second combo here that I want to show quickly is the Malwisp and the, not the Malwisp, the Meloseek and the Pukuri. So if you have these two in your hand, you got a great two-card combo here. So you're going to normal summon the Meloseek here. And then this guy lets you link from hand. So you're going to link those two off for a Hextia. So you're going to want to make sure where your zones point. Even I mess up to this point. Now, 
you're going to have chain link one metal sink, chain link two pulkery. The reason you're going to want that is because it's going to chain block you. Because this going back to your hand doesn't actually mean much, but so you get the search. So if they have cash, it doesn't really matter. So you add that to hand and you get your search. You're going to search your Malwisp here. So after you search Malwisp, uh, since it was added, you get to special the Malwisp, special summoning the Meliseek. All right, so you have that. And now you're going to link off uh, the Hextia, and let's just say the Mel uh, Seek doesn't really matter too much, into the Prime Banshee. Now, Hextia effect, you're going to be able to search from deck here. So you're going to search your Protocol or Manifestation, um, either or, because you should be having both here. I'm just going to search the, if you have one of them in your hand, search the other one, mind you. Uh, we're just going to search protocol here uh, to your hand. So now you, you do have a monster negate here, your effects can't be negate, all that. Prime Banshee effect, you are going to do that to special summon the Faker, to special summon the Marionetter here uh, to your field. Then you're going to link these two off. To the, and then you're going to get your Adminia. Now, Adminia's effect on summon is really nice. Now, first, you're going to be able to chain block. You're going to go chain link one this, chain link two Prime Banshee. Per so, Prime Banshee is going to get you a card from the grave back to your hand. I would personally just add Faker. Um, Faker by far. So, now you have these three cards in your hand guaranteed, uh, which is really good. And then you're going to be able to set whatever you didn't search, which for us is going to be the Reborn here. Uh, once I am able to find it here, it is right here. So, you set the uh, the Reborn. You're going to reborn, be reborning Hextia, by the way. And then you're going to act, uh, you can activate this guy's effect in order to say, get Hextia back. Um, do whatever you kind of want here with it. So, let's say you're, you tribute it off. You're going to reborn the Hextia. Right, and then you're gonna have the protocol and the manifestation set, and you could say pass your turn here, right? Then during your point standby, you could say flip, you know, flip protocol, uh, and then you can reveal your faker to special summon your faker, say to this zone, and then you could special summon the bounce right over here. So you're right now you have a steal, a spell trap negate, a bounce, and then a monster negate, which is really good, right? However, you actually have a little bit more here because if some again, it, it depends also if your opponent breaks your board somehow. But once you tribute this, you can reborn uh, something for its tribute, uh, like uh, Prime Banshee, and then it's sent to grave. And then you also have its quick effect, which is nice, so it helps you dodge stuff. Uh, but um, you know, it depends on what it is, obviously. But then when it's set to grave, you get to add back from grave. And there are ways, depending on your extenders, to make like two Hextia. And yeah, this is just one combo we have so far here.